What is up guys and welcome back to the Doc Mac car channel. Today what I'm going to show you is how to play doctor to your own car. Now purchasing a used vehicle can be one of the most exciting things that you guys can come across when you're purchasing items because it's the second biggest investment that you're ever going to make. Now there are some crooks out there who might not tell you things that you should know. So today the reason for today's video is to show you how you can play doctor to your own car and not only when you're purchasing a used vehicle this can also come in handy when your car has some issues and you want to know beforehand what the issue is before you take it to your mechanic now what i'm going to do first is i'm going to show you under the hood of how things actually get recorded so that you guys will know how to use this device for those of you who would like to support me on Patreon, I'll include a link in the description down below. For those of you who do not know what Patreon is, it basically gives people a chance to support content creators like me so that you guys can make some monthly donations which go towards my content creating so that you guys can get more awesome videos. Alright guys, just before I get into showing you how the engine vehicles and codes get recorded so that you guys can actually check it out now i do a lot of car how to diy videos so if you never want to miss any of my car videos consider subscribing hit that notification bell and if you like what you see consider hitting the thumbs up button all right guys so basically what happens is when your vehicle's engine does have some sort of malfunction and urgent attention is required then what it does is it stores a code in what's called an ECU it's an engine control unit and that's basically like a little memory for the car where it actually pulls in your settings and any issues that is wrong with your car will be stored inside your ECU and when that happens your engine check light will illuminate and this is where today's video comes in so without further ado, I'm going to show you how to check it. All right, guys. So the product which I'm talking about today is the Blue Driver. Now, this is a diagnostic scan tool, which is an OBD2 port compatible tool. And that's the one on the back. And that's the one on the front. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unbox this product and I'm going to explain to you exactly how it works, how you can run it and what are the different modes you can use. All right, guys, the first thing you want to do is you want to take the box out and then you're left with this little box and then you've got to unwrap it. That's your blue driver. Here you are. All right, and that is your blue driver right here. So this one hooks into your car's OBD2 port and I'll show you exactly how you need to do it. All right, guys, the first thing you need to do is you'll need to locate the OBD2 port to plug this unit in. Now, the OBD2 port is typically on your driver's side. On some vehicles, there's a little port you can open here and it'll be in there. And some vehicles, there'll be a port down here. So on this 2012 Toyota Camry, the OBD2 port is right down here. All right, guys, I'm going to plug this one into the OBD2 port right now. So this is the one right here, and the orientation is going to be this way. Once you plug it in, you'll see this blue light come on, and then you will have 60 seconds to pair it to your device. When you are running this test, you want to make sure that the key is in the run position. So I'll show you what the run position is for those of you who don't know. So I'm inserting the key in. That's locked. That's accessory, second. And this is the one just before you start the vehicle. So this is the run position. A way that you can tell is all of your dash lights are gonna come on. And this is the position that you'll need to have the vehicle in when you're doing the scan. Now, if you do have a stop start engine, like the little button there, which you can use for stop start, then what you'll need to do is you'll need to hold that button down for five seconds, and that'll take you to the run position. All right, guys, so once you guys have the blue driver running, you will have the option to read codes. So I'm going to click read codes. And then now it's going to ask me what type of scan I would like. So the first option is check engine light. What that means is it only checks things like this on the dash, check engine light. 
and then these ones are common dash lights such as ABS, SRS airbags, check engine light as well and all other things which normally come up on the dash. Now all system modules include engine check, ABS, SRS and gearbox as well. So those are quite good. So now I'm going to do an all systems modules check and then you will just need to allow it to scan. Yes, this is about two and a half minutes later. As you can see, I don't have any engine check light code, which does confirm it because I don't have a check engine light on. Even if I start the vehicle, it'll all go off, so that's fine. No pending codes. Pending codes are basically a warning or some advisory that some things are needed, but not very urgent. And permanent codes are those where the issue does lie and you cannot clear the codes without actually fixing it. So once you fix it, that will automatically clear itself. Now, as you can see right here, uh, engine codes always start with a P. Now here it says B1507, open in turn signal circuit. This might be because the panel beater replaced the right hand side headlight. So I think there's a bit of issue with the turn signal circuit. And then one air conditioner code, lost communication with ECM slash PCM. So what you can do is you can actually Google these codes and then it can show you exactly what the causes and what the possible resolutions can be. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go to smog check. So the smog check is basically your carbon emission test. And if you go smoke check, you can go continue, that's fine. Now what you need to do is you need to go scan for smoke checks. Okay, smoke checks, readiness check, issues below may cause a smoke check to fail. Vehicle has not yet completed this test and oxygen sensor as well. Okay, as you can see, the smog check does check the engine check light. Zero confirmed troubleshoot, trouble codes, zero pending trouble codes. There's no misfires. Fuel system is okay. Comprehensive component test is fine. EGR test for this vehicle is not compatible because mine is a New Zealand new vehicle. Now, the compatibility of the vehicle is not where the car is made. It's where the car is purchased. And then you can see catalyst. It's not that it's failed. The vehicle has not yet completed this test. So it's not that bad. And oxygen sensor has not been completed yet. So if we go scan again. All right, so catalyst and oxygen sensor has not been tested yet. Okay, so these are how you can actually make sure that you pass your carbon emissions test. Mode 6, this one actually shows you how the vehicle is operating compared to what its factory status is like. So with this one, as you can see, oxygen sensor, bank 1, how much the value is. So I'll need to start the vehicle for that one. Okay, so for these things here, the test has not been done because my car is a New Zealand new vehicle. As you can see, it does all the mode 6 tests as well. It's what your vehicle normally was from the factory versus how it is now. And then what you can do is your MIL status is your malfunction indicator lamp status. Runtime with the engine check light on, zero day, zero hours. I cleared the codes just now and there were none. So runtime since the trouble codes cleared, 52 minutes, and runtime since the engine start is 44 seconds. So what it's going to say is the runtime since trouble codes have cleared is the running time of the vehicle, not actually 52 minutes ago, but how long you have driven. All right, so as you can see, you can also go service, and then that is your oil reset light. So if you have got a vehicle, where your oil reset light is coming on telling you that you're overdue a service and you've actually done the service then you can reset it
Your, this is your TPMS reset, so that's your tire pressure monitoring system. So for those of you guys who do have, let's say, um, underinflated tires that is not being reported correctly. So if you guys' tires are fine, but it's reporting as underinflated, you can reset that one as well. All right, that's why you can see there's so many things that you can do here. There's a user manual as well that you can use. All right, guys, I hope this video has been useful and informative. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up and also consider sharing this with your friends.